welcome back. So this video is really special for two reasons. The first one is that it's a collaboration video with Rumi over at Simply Blissful Living. And the second one is that it's my first time doing a lamb recipe on the channel. So Rumi and I decided to do this collaboration because of the similarities with Fiji cooking and with Trinbagonian cooking or with Guyanese cooking as well as Jamaican cooking. So we have many similarities. If you noticed on many of my videos, you would see Fijians commenting and saying that our dishes are so similar to theirs. So today we're going to be doing a curry lamb recipe. She's going to be making lamb curry. So it's basically the same dish but different methods and different ingredients. So make sure you go check out Romy's video. I will have everything linked in the description box below and I'll also link it right here in the cards above. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure you go give her video a thumbs up. Leave her some positive feedback on her video and make sure you leave your comments down below here as well. Let me know how you make your curry lamb and if you want to see how I do the recipe, keep watching. So to get started, you'll need to wash your lamb and I already pre-washed it. I just washed it with some vinegar and I washed it about five times just to make sure that the water was running clear. And it was cleaned and everything already for me. The only thing you may want to do is cut it into smaller pieces. But just remember when you cook lamb or any meat for that matter, it does kind of reduce and get smaller because the liquid content comes out of it. So if you want to cut it up smaller, you can do so, but at this size, I think it's good enough. So to season up the lamb, you'll need salt, pepper, and I have some green seasoning here. I just blended up this green seasoning and it just has some shadow benny or bandana leaves, some garlic, hot pepper, and I also added some curry leaves or carapilla leaves. But if you look at my green seasoning video, which I will link right here in the upper right hand corner, you won't see that I added carapilla leaves or curry leaves to this. I'm just adding it just for a little extra flavor because I'll be currying the lamb. So I'm going to use half to curry the lamb and then I'll use the next half to finish up the curry when it's nearly done. Over here I have my curry mixture and I have my favorite blend of madras curry here. I also have some turmeric powder, some roasted ground jeera and some black amchar masala. And if you're familiar with making curry, you might just want to add curry powder alone because the curry powder does contain these spices. This is just how my mom taught me to make curry. So this is how I usually make mine. Um, she says that the extra spices gives it more of a chatak taste. So like a nice spicy flavorful taste. And another thing I like to add when cooking red meat is some hot and spicy duck and goat curry powder. And this is from Chief. I'm not sure where you can find it if you live out of Trinidad. You can try a West Indian store. If you live in New York, Liberty Avenue has them in most of the groceries and the markets. So you can check that out and you can also check online as well. I'm not sure if the Callaloo box carries it, but you can try them. But definitely try out this curry powder when you cook in any red meats. To chunky the lamb or to saute the aromatics and the spices in the hot oil, I have a hot pepper, there's a scotch bonnet. I would have preferred to use a red pepper, but I couldn't find any, so this is what I had in the fridge. I had to use this one. I have half of a large onion. I'll just be dicing this up. Some garlic, I'll just mince this up. A little piece of ginger, and I know you all might think this is weird, but ginger does go great in curry dishes. And I just like to grate in a little piece. It gives a little extra kick. Over here I have some curry leaves or carapile leaves. This goes great in any curry dishes. And I also have some pimento peppers here. These peppers have a lot of flavor but not too much heat. But you can get some with a little heat in it sometimes. So before using it, make sure you cut it, smell it. Because if you're cooking this for children, you don't want them to get burned. So make sure you check it before using it. But this packs a lot of flavor. And I have two sprigs of sive or scallion. This is to just finish off the curry lamb. And if I forget anything else, I will have it listed in the description box below. All the exact measurements and everything will be listed there. And I've started back posting recipes on my website, so I will link this recipe eventually. It's gonna end up there. I'll definitely let you all know when this recipe goes up on the website. So to season the lamb, I'm just gonna start off with a little salt. You don't want to go too heavy on the salt at first because 
You know, you can always add salt, but you can't take salt out. Go in with a little fresh black pepper. Add the half of the green seasoning, as I mentioned. Green seasoning just tends to give meats a lovely color. Even though this is not cooked yet, it just seems edible right now. And I just like to season it with this green seasoning alone and just let it sit for a few hours, let it marinate, soak up all that nice seasoning and then we could start cooking it. So I have my cast iron pot here heating up on medium high heat. And because this pot is pre-seasoned, I don't need to add too much oil. But I'm just going to go in with a little bit. Like about two teaspoons. So the oil seems to be hot now. I'm going to add the onions in first. And you're going to let this saute for just about a minute until it becomes translucent. So once the onions are nice and translucent, I'm going to go in with the garlic as well as the chopped pimento peppers. And I'll also chop that hot pepper at this point. Add the carapili or the curry leaves. And after about a minute, just lower your heat all the way down to about medium low. And grate in the ginger. So after about 10 to 20 seconds, you're going to add your curry as well as your extra spices in there. Go in with that duck and goat curry powder. This just really adds to the flavor. It gives it like a distinct flavor. So after about a minute and a half of patching or parching here, you'll notice the curry powders and the spices, they're all blended and they mixed in with the aromatics that we added. So I just added a little water to the bowl I had the spices in and I'm gonna add it here. You wanna make sure that curry cooks properly. And I'm gonna crank my heat back up to medium high. And you'll notice the curry and the spices, the oils are going to be extracted from it and you'll notice that it's going to start to get very grainy and that's your cue to add the lamb in. So you see that grainy texture I was talking about? So this is at the perfect stage right now, this is just ready for the lamb to be added in. And don't waste any of these seasonings there. Make sure you get all these seasonings out of here. So you're just gonna mix the lamb and that curry paste. And it's not much lamb, it's like two and a half pounds. But it's good that it's not too much so it gets to cook evenly in this pot. And I would highly suggest that you use a very heavy bottom cast iron pot for this or for any curry for that matter, it tends to cook it more evenly and it distributes the heat throughout the pot. So now all we're gonna do is let this bungee and bungee just means for the natural water or the natural liquid in the lamb to be extracted and to get reduced. So we're actually forcing that liquid in the lamb to come out and to reduce. So I have it on high heat and I'm gonna cover it and I'll keep checking on it for about five minutes I'll cover it and um, then we could come back and check on it so let's see what's going on here so you see how much liquid came out of the lamb it's spraying a lot of juices so now that we got the juices going now you're gonna leave the cover off and just let it reduce again so once the bunging process is over, you'll notice most of that liquid or all of the liquid is gone and you'll hear that nice charring at the bottom of the pot. 
So I'm gonna lower the heat all the way down to medium low and I'm gonna add enough water to cover the lamb. So you notice I added the water to this basin that the lamb was in so I got all the extra seasonings out. So as you know red meat gets really tough if you don't cook it long enough. So I have it on medium low heat and we're gonna let it cook low and slow because you want it to get nice and tender but you don't want it to cook very quickly because then it tends to get hard. So you have to be very delicate in this process. So leave it to cook low and slow. It's gonna take about 45 minutes to an hour. So what you want to do is you can pressure cook it as well. If you don't wanna wait so long for it to cook in a cast iron pot, you can pressure cook it for half an hour. So I'm gonna cover this and leave it to go for about 45 minutes and I'll come back and check on it occasionally just to make sure it's going good with the liquid because you want to make sure it doesn't start sticking or anything. So the lamb has been cooking for 45 minutes. So let's see what's going on here. Ooh, I could see how tender it is. So it's not quite there yet, so I'm gonna raise the heat to medium. And I'm gonna cover it again and I'll check it back in about 15 minutes. So it's 10 minutes later. I'm gonna lift the lid off. And it's reducing nicely there. So I'm gonna leave the cover off right now and I'm just gonna raise the heat to like medium high. And I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of green seasoning. So it gets that nice fresh hint of the green seasoning at the end. So you really just want this to reduce to the amount of sauce you want. So I want a little bit of sauce in mine, not too thin. Because as you can see, there's a lot of liquid in here still. So I want a nice thick gravy. So this should take just about 10 minutes again and it'll be ready. So after 10 minutes, you can see how it's reduced and there's a nice thick gravy at the bottom. And because this cast iron holds heat very well, even when I turn this off, it's still gonna continue cooking. So you have to compensate for that as well. At this point, I'm just gonna add some more of the carapilla or the curry leaves. And I'm gonna just finish it with some sive or some scallion. And that's about it. Now all you do is taste to see if it needs salt or pepper or anything else. And you could just turn this off now and save it with some dal and rice or as cutters or appetizers. So thank you so much for watching the curry lamb video. Make sure you head over to Romy's channel. I'll have all the information listed in the description box below. Or you can just head over to Simply Blissful Living here on YouTube. Make sure you go check out her recipe, subscribe to her channel, like the video, leave her some positive feedback in the comment section. And I just wanted to thank her for doing the collaboration and for teaching me and all the viewers at Taste of Trini about the Fijian Indian cuisine and the similarities between our food. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave your comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you won't miss any videos. So until I see you all in my next one, bye!